Hi, I'm Nick from Marantis, and I'm going to be giving you a quick tour of how to use Fuel to configure and deploy an OpenStack cloud environment. So before we get started, let's talk for just a moment about what you're going to need. Fuel will deploy OpenStack on either bare metal or virtual box, but we're assuming that you'll probably want to start by seeing Fuel work in a virtual box environment before you use it on bare metal hardware, so that's where we're going to start in this demo. Now, you can go through the process of manually setting up a VirtualBox machine and mounting the Fuel ISO, but we've made it really simple by providing a series of scripts that will do all of the configuration for you, so let's do it that way. The first step is to extract the scripts and copy the ISO to the ISO directory so the scripts know where to find it. Once you've got your files in place, you can go ahead and launch the VirtualBox script to create the master node and slave nodes. From here, the script will go ahead and spawn a new VM for the Fuel ISO. It'll take anywhere from a few minutes to half an hour to do the install, so let's pause here and come back when it's finished. So now the master node's installed, and Fuel is spinning up the rest of the nodes in the cluster. This only takes a minute or two because all it's doing is bringing up the nodes using an extremely stripped down version of CentOS that's just loaded into memory so that they'll be available to Fuel, as we'll see in a moment. At this point, the Fuel interface is ready, and you can get the URL for it here in the console window. So open your browser, and let's take a look at the interface. Notice, first of all, that Fuel has discovered the slave nodes, so you don't have to do anything special to make them available. And you can get more information here in the notifications list. As you can see, first it's told us that the master node's been installed, and then it's discovered each slave node. If you click the individual notification, you can get more information about the actual node. You can use Fuel to manage multiple environments, but we'll just go ahead and start with one. This is your main management screen, so you can do everything you need to do from here. Let's just take a quick look before we move on. The main tab lets you add and remove nodes and set the deployment mode. The network settings tab lets you control your networking information, and you can also control your general OpenStack settings. And of course you're going to want to see the various logs of what's going on. In Fuel 3.1, there's now a Morantis OpenStack Health Check tab to test your OpenStack environment. And finally, you can delete an entire environment to clean up. New in version 3.1 is the ability to install Red Hat Enterprise Linux OpenStack platform. You can download your Red Hat software to the Fuel Masternode through the releases screen. But for this demo, we'll just install the Morantis OpenStack distribution that comes with Fuel. All right, so let's go ahead and actually create the cluster. Before we do anything else, let's choose the deployment mode. Morantis supplies two reference architectures for you to start with, including one for high availability, which deploys the additional open source components you'll need to make it work. As you can see, Fuel automatically shows that you'll need three controllers for HA, plus extra compute and cinder nodes. But to make things simple for this demo, we'll just choose multi-node rather than multi-node HA, because we'll only need the three nodes we created in the first place. Of course, we're talking about one controller, one compute node, and one cinder node. So click Add to add a controller. Choose one of the unallocated nodes. Then Apply. And you can add the compute node the same way. Because it is the compute node, you'll want to choose the host with the most memory. So fortunately, you can see that at a glance here. If you want more detailed information, you can click the bottom bar of the machine's icon to get the specifications of the node itself. You can also specify which physical network interfaces to use for OpenStack's logical networks by simply dragging the appropriate icons. Fuel lets you see how your drive space will be configured. And of course you can look at the machine's logs. You can view logs from the master node or any of the slave nodes. Of course, since only the Bootstrap OS has been loaded on the slave nodes, there's a limited number of logs to look at at this point, but later you'll have more options. Before we actually deploy the nodes, we'll want to make sure that we've done the rest of the configuration. Now let's look at the OpenStack settings. You can change authentication information, scheduling, hypervisor type, and so on. A quick note here, KMU is great if you're running in VirtualBox, but if you're running on actual hardware, you're going to want to use KVM for the extra performance. As you know, OpenStack environments are highly configurable. You can deploy using various hypervisors, network topologies, and so on, and you can configure all of that through Fuel. These parameters can be configured with the Fuel library manually if you want to dig through the Puppet and Cobbler scripts, but Fuel makes it easier by taking those parameters you'd be configuring via the command line and text files and puts them into a convenient UI. 
For example, you can change the networking settings or your network manager. Now, before we actually deploy anything, we're going to want to make sure everything's configured correctly. So let's take a closer look over at the network settings. I wanted to bring your attention to a handy feature, and that's the ability to go ahead and verify your networking setup. As you can see, if I specify settings that are going to cause problems, Fuel is going to go ahead and catch it. Fuel will also let me know if there are any other network problems, such as inaccessible VLANs. Okay, so now that everything's configured and verified, we can go ahead and click Deploy Changes. As you can see here, Fuel's going to start by installing the actual OS, and you can also see that on the node itself. Notice that once the installation starts, those additional logs are available for you to view. You can watch the progress bars for each node and for the overall install as Fuel does its job, but let's skip ahead. Once it's installed the operating system, Fuel goes ahead and starts installing the actual OpenStack components. And of course, you can go ahead and look at the log for these nodes while they're installing. Okay, this is still installing, so let's skip ahead. All right, now that all of our nodes are installed, we'll want to use the Mirantis OpenStack Health Check to make sure everything was deployed properly. You can also use these tests to make sure that all the basic OpenStack functions you're going to use, such as creating a new image or deploying VMs, are working as expected. On the other hand, if something fails, you'll get an error message that will help you debug the issue, and the test will get a thumbs down. These tests can take up to five minutes, so let's skip ahead again. There are a small number of tests that are always going to fail in a VirtualBox environment, and we haven't set up enough RAM in our compute node for the instance booting tests, as you can see here. But otherwise, all of our tests have passed, so we can go ahead and open the OpenStack dashboard itself. You can find the address right up here on the main page. And of course, in the OpenStack settings tab, we set the username and password as admin admin, so we'll use that. So let's go ahead to the project and spin up a new instance. We've added a special test VM image, so create a tiny instance based on that. As you can see here, the IP is 10.0.0.2, so we can come over to the slave node and SSH into the machine with the traditional Cirrus Cubswin Smiley username and password. Now, the slave node we created didn't have a lot of memory, so we really couldn't spin up another VM without any more compute nodes, so let's go ahead and do that. Fortunately, this is really easy to do. All we need to do is create a new machine and set it to be on the same network as Fuel. Make sure it's set to boot over the network. Now just go ahead and start the machine. Notice that it automatically picks up instructions from Cobbler, and after a minute or two, it automatically shows up as an unallocated node you can add to your cluster. Now, if you have any trouble, 24-7 support is available. We'd really like you to use it and give us feedback so we can make fuel as great as possible. And also, while you're making your requests, we've made it easy to download the logs so you can send them along. Alright, so all that's left to do is clean up after ourselves. On this tab, you can rename an environment, or go ahead and delete it completely. Once we tell Fuel to delete, it'll go ahead and remove all the nodes and return them to their unallocated state, ready for a new OS. It takes a few moments, and then you can see that the environment's gone, and the nodes are ready to be reallocated. And that's all there is to it. Again, we encourage you to use the support link to let us know how things are working for you. You can also post your question or comments in our documentation section. Thanks for watching this demo of Fuel, Mirantis Control Plane for OpenStack. If you'd like more information about purchasing a subscription, getting some on-site assistance with your deployment, or signing up for personalized OpenStack training, please contact us at fuel.mirantis.com contact.